the United States is not just a global superpower, it's also a global sugar daddy. But the bill gets sent to the American taxpayer. House Speaker Mike Johnson says he will not put the $95 billion foreign aid bill the Senate passed to a vote, but will instead have this plan. You'll have four different bills, as you said. You'll have Israel uh, first in the order, then you'll have the Indo-Pacific region, then you'll have the Ukraine matter, and then a fourth bill will introduce our other national security priorities, and that'll include sanctions for, additional sanctions for Russia and Iran and the Repo Act, which is the seizure of uh, corrupt Russian oligarchs' assets to, um, to assist with all this. Joining us now, House Foreign Affairs Committee member, Congressman Corey Mills. Congressman, great to see you. Uh, before we get to House Speaker Johnson splitting these bills up, why hasn't Chuck Schumer taken up the funding bill for Israel that you passed, the House passed, what, six months ago? Well, that's exactly right. We passed a $14.3 billion aid bill to Israel that was not only to help our ally, but was physically responsible and prevented us from saddling Americans with further debt or getting more money printed, which drives up inflation and cost of living. So we utilized the excess money from the 87,000 IRS deep state agents that Joe Biden wanted to utilize that as a pay for. And Senator Schumer and Mitch McConnell have refused to bring that to the vote. Congressman, I liked the pay for part of that bill. I think a lot of Americans liked it. Look, if we're going to give money to our allies, let's take it from some other place so that you're not bankrupting Americans. But I don't see that in any of the bills we're talking about now. What happened? Well, I'll tell you ahead of time, and it's not a big surprise. I've talked to Speaker Johnson. We had about an hour and a half yesterday. Uh, we had a further meeting today uh, with a group of colleagues. I'm an absolute no on the rules package. This is principle over procedural for me because of the exact reason that you said. Look, in our history, only about 20 plus nations have ever gotten to 130% of their GDP to national debt spending. Of those 20 plus nations, only one has ever bailed themselves out of it, and that was Japan. I am not looking to do the social and economic experiment to see if America can recover. We have to start being more physically responsible and it breaks us down into three things. It's America, Americans, or American interest. If it does not meet those three criteria, then we need to reevaluate exactly what our priorities are because we have open borders where we have nine point plus million people, as Senator Marshall Blackburn had just said. We've got 70 to 100,000 people who are dying of fentanyl every day. We've got angel families like Lake and Riley or even my own state Florida House Representative Keon Mike Michael, whose son was killed by a guy that was deported three times. These are my priorities for the American people. Not to mention, if we're going to pass these types of bills, why are we not doing policy riders like H.R. 2, Secure the Border Act, or H.R. 1, Low Cost Energy Act, which would basically allow it to be a pay for when you think about increasing the American industrial production of oil and gas. And so this is a way to not only get our cost of goods and CPI lower, but this also is lowering our heating and cooling of our homes. This is lowering the cost of hardworking Americans going back and forth to work, dropping their kids off, doing extracurricular activities. And so my priority is definitely not on anything unless it is a pay for, it is economically principled, and it's something that actually hits one of those three criteria of America, Americans, or American interest. Right. I look at, the, we both look at just the first six months of the fiscal year, how the United States, because of Joe Biden's reckless spending, is paying more in interest on the federal debt That's right. than we are in um, money for our national defense. And another thing that you passed out of the House, rather than giving, how about just stopping the flow of money to Iran, you passed the SHIP Act, which would right. sanction Chinese buyers, the refineries in China, for, for buying Iranian oil. Well, has and gone Dagan, nowhere in the Senate. And, and agreed. The biggest buyer of Iranian oil is China, about 90% of the 1.8 million barrels that Iran exported last month. It's insanity. 
Well, but Dagan, let's go ahead and go to step further. Since when is it the Americans' fault that there's an actual invasion going on in Kiev or in Ukraine when you've got David O'Sullivan, who is the EU sanctions chief, who admitted to having $190 billion or a billion euro in frozen assets from Russia that they're making $3.5 in profit on? Why is that money not going towards it? Why is NATO, which was created in the 1940s for this intentional purpose to stop Soviet Union expansionism, paying their 2% as Donald Trump had forced Germany to do? The bottom line is that you've had Joe Biden. You can't be pro-Israel and pro-Iran. He has been pro-Iran. He delisted the Houthis as a terrorist organization. He's increased the amount of oil exportation to a record never seen before. And he's actually gone ahead and weakened things by not holding Iran accountable and funding these things like UNRWA, which is $343 million, yep. which is going towards funding and prioritizing the October 7th right. horrendous incident. So I'm with you a thousand percent on this. It needs to be a pay for it. it. needs to be for America. And we need to stop yep. Iran yep. from doing what they're doing. Congressman Corey Mills, thank you, sir. Pleasure.